Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God, of our salvation. That the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun. And may the poor be lifted up. Hello and welcome to this worship service for the fourth Sunday of Lent at Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish. My name is Jeff Schlesinger. I'm the pastor at Heart of Illinois Lutheran, which is made up of First Lutheran uh, Church in Lee, which is where I stand right now, and Emmanuel Lutheran Church, which is south of Compton, about 18 miles to the south and west of here. I'm so glad you chose to join us. We're, we're, over, we're delighted that you are finding uh, our worship service online and that you're joining us here. We do meet each week on Sundays uh, uh, for in-person worship, and we invite you to join us there. Uh, we meet at 8.30 at Emmanuel and at 10.30 at Lee, and please uh, feel free to come as you are whenever you're able uh, to these services. When you're not able to come, uh, we have committed to uh, providing these for the foreseeable future, these meditative videos. They're not quite as full, uh, and of course they're not uh, in the uh, presence of our brothers and sisters in Christ uh, in person. But uh, when you're not able to attend, we hope that you find these edifying and helpful as you grow in faith. Again, and welcome to worship. We continue the service uh, with the... Uh, confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us turn to God in confession. We ask, O oh God, your gracious will, your mercy is our need. We lie and cheat and steal and kill in both our thoughts. Brothers and sisters, God is indeed amazing and full of grace. For in God's never-ending mercy, a Son was sent, Jesus Christ our Lord. It is through Christ's death that we, who were dead to sin, have been given life. So it is my privilege today to declare to you God's amazing grace. 
in the name of Christ, all of your sins are forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassion, you welcome, you welcome the, wayward, the wayward and you embrace, and you embrace us all with your mercy. mercy. By, By your baptism, baptism clothe us with garments of your grace and feed us at the table, table of your love through Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior, Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with, with you in the Holy Spirit, Spirit one God, God now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Our Holy Gospel this morning on this fourth Sunday of Lent is from the 15th chapter of Luke. Now, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and before you I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now, his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. The slave replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then the elder son became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, 
For all these years I've been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. The lion is the mightiest of all beasts. Once there was a lion who was truly the king of the jungle. In his part of Africa where he roamed, he was the king. He was mightier than all the other beasts. A male lion with a great mane and big strong muscles. He had a pride of lionesses that, mar that rivaled no other. He was the king of the jungle. As he was out one day wandering through his jungle, he tripped over something, and as he tripped, out of the sky came tumbling down something that landed right on top of him. It was a net, a strong net. He started to struggle and tried to get out. The more he struggled, the more he got stuck in this net. He had fallen captive to the trap of the human beings. As he struggled, he began to tire out. And he stopped and rested and huffed and puffed. As he was sitting there huffing and puffing, there under the net was another creature with him. A creature that wasn't bound by these nets, a creature that could run away. It was but a little tiny mouse. His struggling had made this lion Hungry, as lions often are hungry most of the time. This mighty lion took his paw, which was still free to move just a bit, and put it on top of that mouse. Thinking that this little bitty mouse, this little bitty morsel, this little bitty appetizer would be his last meal. The lion licked his lips and pre prepared to consume this tiny little mouse. You know this story. You may even know how it ends. How the mouse chews the net away so that the lion can get out. But it's at this point in the story that the storyteller needs to decide how to end this story. Oh, the end is the same. Yes, the mouse does indeed chew the net away and the lion escapes. But it's at this point in the story that the storyteller has to decide what tact to take, what direction to take in ending this story. Is the storyteller going to tell the rest of the story from the perspective of the lion or from the perspective of the mouse? It makes a huge difference. For if you tell it from the perspective of the mouse, you've got the mouse pleading for its life, but then succeeding in helping this mighty, mighty beast that is thousands of times larger than it, can swallow it in one single gulp. But this little tiny mouse, it's helpful and necessary for this giant lion. If you tell it from the perspective of the mouse, suddenly you've got a story that encourages the little people in the world 
whether it be a child, whether it be somebody who's oppressed. It gives meaning to the little, the least of those in this world. Or perhaps you decide to tell it from the perspective of the lion. The mighty lion, who is indeed the king, the mightiest of beasts in this part of creation. But here the mightiest of beasts finds himself helpless and dependent upon this little mouse, who indeed chews the net away and the lion is able to escape. But when you tell it from the perspective of a lion, suddenly it's a story about humility. About how even the strongest of us are in need of the weakest. How we must love even those that, are, that we seem to think are much lesser than us. For they aren't for all creatures. Serve their purpose. How you tell the story makes a huge difference. I reflect on the way we tell a story because it has everything to do with how we understand this marvelous story that Jesus tells us in today's gospel. This well-known story of the what we call the prodigal son. I say the story we call the story of the prodigal son because that's the traditional name of it. We call it the story of the prodigal, which, which means lavish, the son that went off and lavishly wasted his father's money. That's the traditional name of it. But many have said that it is misnamed, that that is the wrong name of it. That the true name of the story should be that of the loving father or, or of the forgiving father. For this story is not about the son's prodigal living, his lavish living. The story is about the miracle of the father's forgiveness. I would agree with that renaming of the story, the story of the loving father, except for one major thing. Jesus adds more to this parable. You see, Jesus tells this story about this son who comes to his father, this younger son. He's got an older brother, this younger son, who comes to his father and asks for his inheritance. Essentially, he says to his father, Father, I no longer wish to be associated with you. In fact, I want you to be dead to me. I'd like to receive my share of the inheritance right now so that I can go off and live my own life. And he does, and he lives, off, lives as a prodigal. He lives lavishly. When he finds himself down and out, out of money, eating unclean food, food that's unclean, to, <laughs> or living with unclean animals and eating food uh, that is unclean to Jews, he found, finds himself at rock bottom. He comes to himself. And he says, oh, this is ridiculous. Even my father's servants have more than me. I'm going to go back to my father and say, hey, father, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, but at least let me be one of your servants. And as he comes back, while he's still far off, this father indeed sees him and doesn't wait for him to get to the door, but he picks up his robes and he runs out to greet him and he hugs him and he holds him and he welcomes him back. And he doesn't just welcome him back, but he throws a party so that the entire community, who no doubt shunned him in the first place, because I'm sure it was known throughout the community what he did, the entire community can welcome him back at this great party that the father throws. It indeed is a story of an incredibly loving and forgiving father. The story isn't an allegory that the father in there is not supposed to be God, but he does symbolize God. And yes, indeed, that is the kind of love that God has. 
There's nothing we can do that's so bad that God won't welcome us back. That's the kind of grace and love that God has for us. And that is a wonderful, wonderful theme of this story. But the thing is, Jesus doesn't stop the story there. If he did, this story would indeed about be mainly about the loving Father. But Jesus has a second part of this story. He tells the story of the elder son and how the elder son reacts. This parable, as we hear the story of the elder son, is not to tell us primarily, although it does do that, it's not to tell us primarily about God's love and forgiveness. But it's directed it's directed at those people who are hearing it. To the grumbling Pharisees and scribes who were there as Jesus spoke it. And as Luke writes it down, the story is directed to the new community of believers in Jesus that is forming as he writes his gospel and he's, as he writes the book of Acts. And as we hear this story, brothers and sisters, this story is directed to you and I and all of those who make up the church with a capital C, the Church Universal. Not just First Lutheran Church or Emmanuel Lutheran Church or Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish or the ELCA, but all those who are part of this great big body of billions of people in the world who call themselves Christians. What Jesus tells us, as he tells us, finishes this story with the story of the elder son. The son who comes and is miffed by the fact that, that this brother who has gone and wasted all of his father's money, gone away and now comes sniveling back as he complains about the party that's thrown to him. Jesus is directing this story to the community of Christ, the church, the believers, to let us know very specific things about what it means to be the church. As I read the account of this elder son, I take three main points home from it. First of all, the church. The church should rejoice when the lost are found. Our job is not to figure out who's on the in and the out. I said this last week, didn't I? It comes up again and again in the Gospel of Luke and in Acts. The church is not to decide who is in and out. But the church is there to welcome all in and rejoice when the lost are found, when the dead have come back to life. How did Jesus introduce this gospel? He, he told the Pharisees, I have come to save not the righteous, but the sinner. There are a couple of parables immediately preceding this one, between those first verses of today's gospel and, and the story of the, the forgiving father of the, the prodigal son, or what I would call the story of the two sons. There are a couple stories in there that celebrate about the lost being found. That is what the church is to be about. Reaching out to the lost, welcoming them in to God's kingdom. Second, those of us who have not strayed, who have not been lost, maybe I should rephrase that. Those of us who think we have not strayed, who think we have not been lost, who think we have not sinned, who think we have not uh, entered into dissolute living, as it says in the gospel. 
We need to hear those words from the Father that says, all that I have is yours. All that is mine is yours. The Father never abandons us. God never abandons us. God is always there inviting us to the party day after day, week after week, year after year. And third, we need to pay specific attention to the way that the Father introduced this celebration. When the Father is addressing the elder son, he said to him, we had to celebrate. Literally, the Greek says, it is necessary that we celebrate. We had to celebrate when this brother of yours returned. We have to. It is necessary. We need to. It is what we do. Because God is all about grace. We don't have to judge. We don't have to condemn. We don't have to punish, but we have to give grace. God gives grace. As the church of God in the world today, as the body of Christ in the world today, we need to, it is necessary that we bestow grace upon the world. The grace of God is a necessary thing for God to be who God is. The grace of God coming through the church, coming through you and I, brothers and sisters, is a necessary thing for the love of God to seep through this world so that the kingdom of God may come to this world as it is in heaven, as we pray in the Lord's Prayer. Yes, indeed. This parable is about a loving father. But more than that, this parable is about how the love of that father comes to you and I, no matter where we find ourselves. Whether we find ourselves as the lost, or we find ourselves as those who think we're never lost, and we've always been faithful, though we might be complaining and self-absorbed like that older brother. No, where to, no matter where we find ourselves, that love of God comes to us. And more importantly, brothers and sisters, that love of God needs to flow through us out to the world. For it is necessary. It must. It has to. The grace of God has to come to this world. Amen. Lord Father, we have wandered and hidden from your face in foolishness have squandered your legacy
Behold us, Lord, returning with open trust to you. In haste you come to meet us, and home rejoicing bring in gladness there to greet us with calf and robe and ring. O Lord of all the living, both vanished and restored, compassionate, forgiving, and ever caring, Lord. Grant now that our transgressing, our faithlessness may cease. Stretch out your hand in blessing, in pardon, and in peace. We are made God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite you to make an offering to the mission of Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish so that we can continue to go forth in ministry. It's because of generosity of people such as you that we've been able to be viable and go forth with spreading the gospel throughout the last two years as we face the pandemic and now as we transition out of the pandemic. Uh, perhaps the easiest way to give especially when you're not in person, is to use online methods. Both of our websites are listed on the screen. They have online giving portals. I invite you to visit those. If you use Venmo, uh, we have that option as well. Even though it says First Lutheran, when you give through Venmo, unless you've noted otherwise, it will be uh, given generally to the mission of Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish. Of course, you can give via mail, and if you'd like to drop the offering off at either of the churches, uh, that is welcome as well. Thank you uh, for your generosity. Thank you to all the members who have continued in your faithful giving so we can remain viable. Thank you to those who have uh, made this service possible. Uh, thank you to Stephen Simpson, who is our, uh, and Joe Holzer, who are our uh, song leaders uh, during uh, this month, uh, this season. Thank you to Ron and Sarah, our accompanists, uh, who make this, uh, who often go unnoticed and make our music flow. Thank you to the voices who have uh, made the liturgy possible uh, for these videos. Our calendar is up on the screen. Uh, we have our regularly scheduled Tuesday tea time uh, and then our Friday Bible study. Uh, those will happen this week. 
Uh, on Wednesday, uh, we continue with our uh, midweek Lenten services. Uh, this week, it'll be over at First and Lee. You're invited to join us there at 6.30. Uh, today, after worship, uh, confirmation will be meeting uh, at first, so please uh, join us there. Uh, oh, also this Wednesday, following the uh, worship at Lee, uh, the bell choir uh, will practice and film uh, for the Easter service uh, bell uh, anthem. So uh, uh, those in the bell choir, uh, please join us for that. We're looking forward to hearing from them. And then next Sunday, uh, our uh, worship schedule is as normal, uh, 8.30 at Emmanuel and 10.30 at Lee, and this meditative service uh, at your convenience will be posted. Uh, look ahead to uh, Holy Week. Uh, during Holy Week, uh, our Monday Thursday service, which is April 14th, uh, will be at 7 o'clock at Emmanuel. Uh, then our Good Friday service will be at 1st uh, at 7 o'clock. And then on Easter Sunday morning, we're going to have a regular worship time. Usually we have a, a sunrise service at Emmanuel, uh, but because we're not ready to have the full community meals yet, and we're not gonna have our Easter breakfast. We decided uh, the sunrise service will be at 8.30 at the normal time uh, this year, uh, and it'll be at 10.30 at least. Next year, we hope to uh, bring back the Easter breakfast, uh, and then we'll have our sunrise service uh, uh, and the breakfast before handover at first. But for this year, uh, we'll have our regular Sunday morning uh, schedule at uh, first, at Emmanuel and first. Uh, Easter lilies and Easter tulips are available. Uh, today is the last day to sign up for them. Uh, if you haven't, uh, and it's late in the day, call first thing tomorrow morning over to the office at Emmanuel, uh, and Debbie can probably get them in. But you're going to have to call uh, probably before 10 o'clock uh, so that she can get those listed. Um, I think that is all the announcements I have for now. Uh, Again, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you for your offerings. We continue uh, the service with the prayers and benediction. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we, we offer, offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, ourselves our time, and our, our possessions, possessions, signs of your gracious love. love. Receive them, them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers to the church, the world, and all who are in need. Jesus formed the disciples in the ways of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. Lead your church to be a community marked by forgiveness, hospitality, and celebration. Send us to transform a world plagued by fear and condemnation. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You make the land to produce a harvest that sustains your entire creation. Equip farmers and farm workers who till the soil. Nourish the earth with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Heal grounds tainted by pollution or misuse. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. Prayers. Countries are divided and leaders often harbor grudges. Reconcile nations that experience conflict. Act quickly to bring an end to war. Anoint peacemakers trained in the art of diplomacy and foster a spirit of collaboration among political rivals. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayers. prayers. Your people cry for help in times of distress. Resolve disagreements among family members. Save those experiencing financial hardship. Hear our prayers for those who are sick or grieving. Console us with the promise that everything can become new. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Your love comes to us when a table is set and a feast is prepared. Bless the feeding ministries of this congregation. Bring an end to hunger in our community and around the world. Merciful God, 
receive our prayer. The one who, who was dead is alive again. We give thanks for those who have died, confident that the steadfast love surrounds them. Shelter them in your love until we are gathered at your heavenly banquet. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Gathered as one in the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now please receive the benediction. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen.